What's up my friend? Welcome back! First of all, if you want to skip this small story that I'm about to tell, just jump to the minute that appears in the description, which is the actual tutorial of this bootloader burn. So, in the past 4 months I've been working to a pretty complex project, building a mini drone. It is complex because it's 100% own made, so I had to create the main circuit, study all the components and requirements, design the PCB, print the PCB, solder all the components and do the entire code. It's still not flying but it's in his final adjustments and the board works pretty nice. I also design and print different types of 3D bodies for the drone and I still didn't choose the perfect one. Anyway, everything worked perfect and I will definitely make a video on how I build it and how to build your own, but not today. Today I want to talk about one of the main issues that I had during this project. You see, I wanted to make the PCB of this drone the smaller it can get, so I used only SMD components. As you can see here, the main microcontroller is an 80 mega 328AU. So I bought this chip from eBay and usually these microchips are virgin when you buy them. What I meant by virgin is that they don't have anything burned on their memory. So as I knew I had to burn a bootloader to it in order to be able to upload any code to it. Let's say the bootloader is like a driver that makes the chip understand the language that you send. Without the bootloader the chip is like a baby, it won't understand you. I've burned the bootloader to 80 mega 328 PU in the past for an Arduino that I've made. It was pretty easy because there is a lot of information on the internet on how to do it. You grab the microchip, stack it into a breadboard with his main components such as the crystal oscillator and subcapacitors. You hook it to an Arduino Uno and burn the bootloader. I had no problems doing that. But when I google up how to burn the bootloader to SMD 80 mega 328 AU, I found almost none information or tutorials. The AU or PU is the difference between the SMD and DIP formats of this chip. The only video that I found is of this guy, which helped me a lot. But what he does I think is not recommended. I'm not an expert with burning bootloaders, but I've done the step that this guy did and it worked. The only problem is after I burned the bootloader I was only able to upload code using the settings for an Arduino Uno. What I mean is I had to select an Arduino Uno board in the Arduino IDE settings, but I am using an Atmega AU which is the chip that an Arduino Nano or Pro Mini uses. So why select an Arduino Uno board? I'm not sure, but I think the good way is to burn an Arduino Nano bootloader to it. I'm not even sure if the bootloaders are the same or not because I didn't work in this area of bootloaders too much. Anyway, after uploading a code to my Arduino Uno bootloader bird chip, I saw that it was processing very slow. Very, very slow. Even with 250,000 baud serial connection, the serial was printing one row per second. I even got problems for a blink code and the frequency wasn't the one that I expected. The I2C connection was also broken so I've decided to reburn another bootloader. I've searched if there is a special bootloader for the AU chip and how to burn it. I've tried selecting other boards when I burn the bootloader, but using the Arduino Uno as ASP it would always burn the Arduino Uno bootloader. So I've decided to use an Arduino Nano to board the bootloader and it worked perfect, but the connection are a little bit different, so I'll show you now all the steps that you have to do. This is the schematic that you have to mount in order to properly use an 80 mega SMD chip. In my case I have already soldered the chip to my pre-made PCB. If you don't have a PCB in your project, you won't be able to connect wires to the smart SMD pins, so you'll need this SMD socket. You can buy it from eBay. It will help you make the connection between the Arduino Nano and the SMD chip, using jump wires and a breadboard. We know that we need a crystal oscillator of 60 MHz in this case, between pin 7 and 8. We can see this oscillator in my design right here. We also need two coupling capacitators connected between each of the two oscillator pins and ground. We can see those right here. We need to power our chip with 5 volts directly to the pins 4, 6 and 18. And again, two coupling capacitators which are very important to have everything stable. The reset pin needs a pull-up resistor of 1 kilo ohms, so we connect a 1 kilo ohm resistor between the pin reset and 5 volts. Finally, we add a 0.1 microfarad capacitor between the RF pin or pin 20 of the chip and ground. If our chip had the bootloader burned to it, it would be already functional, but it doesn't, so we have to make the following connection in order to burn a bootloader to it. 
I will now make a more understandable schematic where I will show all the connections that we made so far and the chip pins as well. This dot right here always show you the pin number 1. After that the pins are increasing counterclockwise. These are the next 4 connections that you need to do in order to make a SPI connection between the Arduino Nano and the Atmega 328AU chip. We first connect digital pin 13 from the Arduino Nano to the pin 17 of our SMD chip. This pin is the clock. After that we connect digital pin 12 from the Arduino Nano to our pin 16 of the SMD chip. This is the MISO or Master Input Sleeves Output pin. Next we connect the digital pin 11 from the Arduino Nano to the pin 15 of the SMD chip. This is the MOSI or Master Output Sleeve Input pin. Finally we connect digital pin 10 from the Arduino Nano to pin 29 of the SMD chip. This pin is the reset pin we talked about earlier with the pull-up resistor to 5 volts. I have to solder this pin because I have no female pin to connect to it. This is the final circuit that you should have. Now all we need to do is open Arduino IDE and connect the Arduino Nano to a PC using a USB connection. Go to examples and open Arduino ISP example code. We select the Arduino Nano board, we select the COM as well and upload this code to the Arduino Nano. Now is the important step. We go to tools, programmer and we change the programmer to Arduino as ISP. This is very important. In this way the Arduino Nano will use the SPI connection to burn the bootloader. Finally, we go to tools again and click burn bootloader. We can see the Arduino LEDs are going crazy. Once it says bootloader successfully burned, we are done. We successfully burned an Arduino Nano bootloader to our chip. To test if it works, I've used an FTDI module with a wart connection to upload a simple blink code to my SMD chip. This is the connection that you have to make. 5 volts and ground of course. TX pin from the FTDA module to the RX pin of the SMD chip, which is pin 30. RX pin from the FTDA module to the TX pin of the SMD chip, which is pin 31. And DTR pin from the FTDA module to the reset pin, which is pin 29. You have to connect a 0.1 microfarad capacitor between DTR and reset pin in order to work. We open the pin code, select the Arduino Nano board, select the COM and upload. As you can see it has been uploaded and the LED is blinking. It's a success. For more information visit my webpage and read all the details in the description down below. I hope you enjoyed, thanks for watching and see you later with more tutorials.